Dear friends, the theme of this short video is merely a reflection on broken hearts restored by love. Not sexual love, not violent love, not impulsive love, and not controlling love. But hearts once broken, now restored through divine love, God's love. I know when I use the word God, or when I used to use the word God or reference God in my work as a retreat director around the world prior to becoming an enclosed into faith Franciscan monk, many would get up and walk out. And when I had chance to speak with them in the coffee break, I would see many of them in different places, different times, in different countries of the world shedding a tear and my heart was always guided to go up and ask are you okay and then I would hear something pretty horrendous where their hearts were completely destroyed broken by man in ignorance and pain and as I looked that these beautiful souls, they became my great teachers. Yes, they did. I miss that part of my ministry now. Only natural do I miss it because I was so privileged to see how God transformed lives through something as simple as a hug. And I'm very much into hugging because hugging for me is healing. It's restorative and it empowers me to receive God's love, something which I found very hard to do over all my lifetime. And I guess I was guilty of the sin of spiritual arrogance. Oh yes, I told people God loved them, but I found it hard to receive love until I was guided by a loving God to face my greatest fears, where I couldn't run away from God anymore, and where my God reached down and touched me and told me that when I was abused as a little boy and again as a monk, that this was not God's will. and that it wasn't my fault. But coming back to meeting the wonderful delegates, there were always one or two that stood out for me in each of those retreats. And years later, they would contact me and say, thank you. Thank you for having had the courage to come up to them and hug them at a time when they were most vulnerable because they blamed God for what happened. Three lovely ladies I met in Dublin going back now, oh, maybe eight years, maybe, yes, eight years. And they were very articulate ladies, well-dressed, extremely presentable. And they shared with me that they were all nuns in the Catholic Church. And I said, where are you now? They said, we were forced to leave because of the abuses. And two left the Catholic Church because they were so traumatized by, what, by their experiences. And the other was sort of 50-50. And I hugged them and I could feel their pain. I could feel the inner anguish that they carried for best part of 20 odd years. And here were three professional women, a psychologist, a psychiatrist and a doctor. And the sweat poured from me and I felt Jesus say, ask for forgiveness from them for what God's servants done to them. Repent. 
And when I said that, I could feel their nails sticking in me. And their sobbing. Their tears. Their sadness. Their anguish. And as we held each other, the four of us just cried. Because I was like them. I too had been a victim of religious abuse. And I just said, this is not God's will. I can understand why you're anti-God. But this wasn't God's will. This was man abusing God's love. And God is a God of love. But he trusts his children to honor their heart and not feed their ego by becoming spiritually arrogant and alienate souls from a loving God. And that's why Francis our spiritual patron of our community was brought into this lifetime in the 12th century because the church was rotten, corrupt, hedonistic, materialistic, where bishops, priests and cardinals were taking mistresses and being deceitful. Yes, they were consecrating the bread and wine into the blood of Christ and the body of Christ, but they were giving lip service but Francis showed the ordinary men and women, the children of a loving God, an alternative route through the natural world to a life of peace, a life of service through joy, not fear. So broken hearts can be restored through God's love. But it takes a lot of courage. And I know from here, over the last eight years, many, many people have been brought here on a residential retreat, on a one-to-one, -one, where over a period of 24, maybe 36 hours, that God would touch them, not through my cleverness, not through my academia, but by just resting in a house of love. And he would empower them to share. But you know, I didn't need them to tell me to find out what was wrong. Because one of my dogs, little Sh uh, Shimola, who's now in spirit, would sit by them and give me a look and tell me. And I would know intuitively and hear that this person had been sexually abused. And you're probably thinking, Brother Sean, you've lost it. I haven't lost it. The animal kingdom are messengers of God. And when you trust them, they trust you. And they speak to you through body language. And many souls who've been guided here by God, not through any clever adverts, no. And I've accepted each one as a unique child of God. I may not have liked them, but I love them. And what happened here in the therapeutic exchange was done in love with the utmost respect, sensitivity and generosity. And though I very rarely hear from any of them, occasionally I might get the odd phone call or email that says thank you. And I refer that thanks to God. Because I'm not a healer. I'm a conduit and I know from what I have seen as a nurse for 38 years at the bedside of many dying patients, I have seen the hand of God work, but it takes a person of courage to swallow their pride and their ego and ask for help and until we do that, then the healing process cannot be initiated. Forget the laws of abundance. Forget the courses on how to manifest your wealth. God doesn't do that. God gives you your needs, not your wants. And healing of mind, body and spirit is far more important than living in an ivory palace where you're lonely, miserable and fearful. Surrender your heart and experience the love of God. God bless you.